We're playing Dr. Cole at 15-15. Okay. Well, we played the Sicilian uh, in the first game. Let's go with the good old Scandy. Scandy, Scandy, Scandy. Not Scandal, Scandy. Imagine if there was a scandal with the Scandinavian. You'd have a Scandy Scandal. Dun, dun, dun. Okay, so knight f6. Okay, we've got knight f3. A6, basically to get rid of any of these ideas. And also because he went bishop c4, we have b5 ideas. So we get a tempo on the bishop, meaning that white has to move that bishop. So white doesn't have time to make a, a move with another piece. So we essentially gain a move. So we could go bishop b7 right away. I've learned though in this set, this system, especially with the bishop on e, uh, b3, uh, it's uh, pressuring e6. So I might want to delay bishop to b7 until I'm castled. But mind you, that's been in blitz games. So now that I'm playing a, a rapid slash classical game, um, let's take some time to think here. So if I go e6, is there any benefit to an early knight e5? Because the thing with knight e5 is that opens the idea for queen f3. And that makes bishop b7 harder to achieve. So knight e5, do I then play knight c6? It might be bishop f4, although I could take here. Yeah, it gets tactical, doesn't it? I don't know how comfortable I am with that. I mean, I suppose the advantage of bishop b7 is it deters this move because of bishop takes. Oh, no, it doesn't. Knight e5 because they've got pressure here. So I wouldn't have time for such a maneuver. Hmm. Okay. Uh, the other move that's common here is c5. Do I do c5 right away? Normally I have e6 in before I play c5, but maybe here it does make sense. So c5 with simple idea of just trapping the bishop. So I think it more or less suggests to white to take. And then uh, I suppose I could trade queens, knight takes, then play e6. And I should be able to scoop up that pawn again. So let's, let's give that a whirl. So by the way, if you are interested in uh, learning this, variation of the Scandinavian, the queen d6 variation. Uh, a few weeks back, might have been two or three weeks ago, Magnus Carlsen was playing uh, the title Tuesday on chess.com. And he was playing queen d6 in uh, most of the games that he played black. I think it was title Tuesday. I mean, there's a video of him playing and I'm pretty sure it was Title Tuesday. Okay, so now, now this uh, makes more sense to me. The queens are off the board, so less threatening. I don't have to worry about this queen f3 stuff. And like I said, I should be able to scoop up that pawn. It's not easy for white to reinforce it with b4. I mean, given the fact that the bishop is here. And white has had to take two moves to bring the knight back into play. 
So I could take and damage the pawn structure, but grandmasters love the two bishops. And not that my opponent or myself are grandmasters, but what grandmasters say we can learn from. So I think in this position, white would have some reasonable compensation with the two bishops. Although this bishop here, hmm, that might be worth considering. Let's, let's have a look here. So takes, takes. And the question is, how is this bishop getting back in the game? Uh, probably pro pretty simply, knight e4 and c3, and then the bishop can come back here. Yeah, so I think I think it's better to simply uh, develop a piece. So we're developing a piece, and we're also threatening to take on c5. Now, we could take right away, or we could throw in rook c... God, I'm bad with the mouse today. We could throw in rook c8, lining... Like I said, I'm bad with the mouse today. Lining up the rook with the king. Yeah, I think there's some merit to that. Now, this is a queenless middle game. You may argue it's an end game. Um... You know, at what point does a middle game become the end game? I guess there's some gray area there in certain positions. Uh, this one, there's still a lot of pieces left, so I don't know if I want to keep my king in the center like I would in an end game. So I might still want to castle. Now, what's interesting is I could grab the two bishops. I mean... Logically, it makes sense for me to grab on c5, develop my bishop, and then I'm ready to castle. But if I do it this way, I can grab the two bishops, and that might be worthwhile in the end game. The only thing I have to assess is whether or not I have time to do that, because white has a lead in development. Look at all of white's pieces. They're all out. And I've got two guys that are at home watching TV. They haven't developed yet. So am I going to get in trouble if I don't? I don't see how white can immediately open up the lines. So let's give it a whirl. The nice thing about taking with c5 with the knight is that it does add protection to e6, just in case there was ever some sacrificial stuff. I mean, I don't know. I mean, I'm fully intending to take the bishop on b3. Or if they decide to take that with the dark squared bishop, then I grab the dark squared bishop. Okay, so knight there. So, you know, now there might be some stuff. Um, I don't have to take right away. So what if I just simply go bishop e7? I got to look at ideas like knight f5. Because after takes, bishop takes, ah, I'll be able to take with the rook. See, I wouldn't have been able to take with the with the bishop because of the pin. So let's have a look here. Here, here, takes. Are there any other moves to worry about here? What about uh, bishop to g5? Because my bishop on e7 is attacked by the rook on e1. And so therefore I wouldn't be able to castle because uh, I dropped the bishop, so my king could be stuck in the center. That may be a viable sacrifice. He could have the knight coming in. That looks a little uncomfortable. So what if I take... Uh, and I'm a 
assuming the pawn would take, can I then just play bishop to b4, pinning this knight? Do I have anything to worry about? He could play knight f5, but then I think I can castle. Oh, but then he's got knight d6. And he would grab one of the bishops. So it is possible that white's lead in development is going to lead him to regain the bishop. Don't think I have time for this move. Um, it just seems slow. When you're down in development and your opponent has a massive lead in development, you, you got to get on with it. Slow pawn moves generally are not possible. So with the benefit of hindsight, maybe my rook c8 was a little unnecessary. I should have perhaps gotten this guy out first, and then I'd be ready to castle, because now I'm kind of in a pickle. Hmm. Takes, takes. What about bishop to e7 here? Is this something to worry about? Knight f5, I take. I don't see an immediate way for him to take advantage of that. And I could just go king f8. I mean, I'd be up a piece, and it's not unusual to suffer a little bit when you're up material. So let's try that. Give it a whirl. Okay, so now I thought Bishop E7. Let's just confirm. It's not a bad idea. I mean, yes, you should analyze certain moves ahead, but it's not a bad idea to, once you get a position on the board, to confirm your analysis. So here, here. I don't see any immediate crushes. I think we might be okay here. So if I could castle, I'd be very happy. Have the two bishops. Yeah, I think I can simply castle here. We're quite content. Okay, so g4. I don't think I'm too worried about that. I've got d5, h5 I could go to. Uh, rook d8, bring the other rook into the game. Makes a lot of sense. Uh, the bishop is unprotected. I could play rook e8 just to protect it. Because after rook d8, maybe bishop to g5 is problematic. Because that opens up this rook. And then I have to be always concerned with knight f5. Because a little irritating. Now f3 could be vulnerable. So I don't think it quite works now because he's got knight f5. And then he's hitting the bishop. But something to keep in mind. Be right back in 30 minutes. Okay, sir, honey. Not a problem. Glad you're still watching. Okay, so maybe rook d8, bishop g5. I have to simply play bishop f8. If he damages the pawn structure, that's fine. I have the two bishops as compensation. Bishop f8, but maybe there is like knight here. 
And then I have to give up my two bishops. Hmm. My lovely two bishops. Is there any benefit to throwing in b4? Because if he goes there, I'm winning a pawn. What happens if he just goes to a4? Am I that concerned about that one? I don't think I should be overly concerned. You know what? Maybe I should just not worry about this at all. Uh, or play knight d5. And then I don't have to worry about that move. So we're hitting these two guys. More importantly, we don't have to worry about the uh, knight being pinned here. Okay. Yeah, I think that was a good solution. I like that. So now we could consider bishop f6, maybe in the future causing issues on that diagonal. Could also go like bishop to b4. So I'm not sure what the computer evaluation is, but I guess it's probably minus 0.5 in black's favor ever so slightly due to the two bishops. Is that enough for a winning advantage? No. Okay, and this was what I was always concerned about, this knight f5 move. So here, if I were to take, there is a rook takes d5. So he, my god, I'm bad with the arrows. Rook takes d5, takes, takes, and I can no longer be ecstatic about my two bishops, but that could be a blunder actually, because I think I could play bishop to b4, hitting the rook. So I hit the rook, and the rook and the knight are both attacked. If he goes c3, well, I've got it pinned to the king. So I have time to take. So how are they planning to defend Maybe rook here is the idea. And the knight's no longer attacked. Although, I don't have to take that rook. I can even take this rook. And then these two guys are still en prise. But i got to think about that. Hold on. So, at this point, I'm up to the exchange. But then there's this. So then I'm down a piece. But I grab this, so I'm back up the exchange. Yeah, that, that's advantageous for me. So I think my opponent missed that. Yeah, bishop b4. You always got to be uh, careful when you're putting your pieces en prise, as they say in French meaning that they can be captured. All prees means it's currently capturable. If that's uh, a word. I may have just uh, invented a word. Capturable is our, n our word of the day. Capturable. Okay, so first real big think for our opponent. Let's see what they come up with.
Okay. Yeah. Um, so I take with check first. Oh, okay. So he has found a solution. Shoot. Shoot. This is not as good as I thought. And knight e7 is now a threat. Son of a gun. Nice, nice job by my opponent. Arg. Um, hmm. Well, that really sucks. Because this is a nasty threat. So I might have to go rook c7 here just to eliminate that threat. Mm, missed that one. Nice, nice, nice move. Okay, rook here. I still can go there because of this move. Yeah, so we've had the two bishops and now we're blowing away any kind of uh, advantage. So rook e8 was the right move there. No, even then he would still have that idea. That tactic still works. Hmm. Yes, indeed. Very nice. Very nice. It looks like we blew it. Darn. Darn da da darn da da darn da da darn. Darn da da darn darn darn. Okay. Um hmm. Here, 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 here. So we might as well take the darn knight. And uh Okay. So a few inaccuracies and we've frittered away any type of advantage. Okay. Um Well, for winning chances, I'd like to keep the two rooks on the board, but I think he's going to be able to scoop this up. If I go here, simply up. If I go here, simply here. Actually, hold on now. Then I could try a4. And if he takes... Then I could play b4. Hmm. Then there's rook here. Takes, 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 takes. King. And I've got back rank issues, so I have to come back. And he's got the outside pass here, so I don't like that. So, yeah, I'm going to have to offer the exchange of rooks, unfortunately. And we're going to have to get our king here so that we have an, a square. Okay, so now this should just be a dead draw. Rook. Once a, a pair of rooks gets uh, exchanged. Okay, if I'm going to go over there, is he going to check me? Is that his idea? Am I worried about that? Maybe there's g5. King here. Yeah, let's just go rook c7 here.
Okay, so he wants to bring the other rook down, I guess. Not a bad idea. Um, yeah, and this rook is going to basically prevent me from advancing that. I suppose he could also go here and just simply win that guy. That is slightly annoying. So we have some work to do if we want to draw this, I think. Um, can we sack that a pawn, or do we have to try to? That feels quite passive. Uh, it also feels like I'm going to lose a pawn anyway because of this move. He would either get f7 or a6, so it looks like I can't save a pawn. So let's try to trade some pawns off. Yeah, so he's going to have a pawn mass 3 against 1 here. Gonna have some uh, winning chances, I think. Which would be a darn shame if we fritter this one away. We had a real nice position, but I think with best play it should still be drawn. Okay, so I thought we could just simply scoop that up. And yeah, you could go there. But it's important to have active rooks. You, you rarely, rarely want to have a passive rook. It's rarely a good idea. Okay, well, nature is calling, so I am going to be right back. Um, well, before I do that, let's see if we can play a move. Let's attack this guy. Okay, be right back. Okay, so opponent is uh, attacking the b5 pawn. That's not very nice. So the idea is if I take, they take, and then they have three protected pass pawns. So I probably have to prote protect that guy if I want to take him. So let's do that. Okay. Um, Rook here? 
do we off the exchange of rooks? Probably best to keep a pair of rooks on, so let's go here. Basically, I, I want to see if he's going to do that. Okay. I'll move the king. If he goes here to attack that, I can just move the king and my rook helps. Now, if he goes rook f2, my thinking is I could try to use this pin. So maybe rook f2, g5, he's got to go h3. But then maybe I can target the h3 pawn. Imagine he's going to be able to create two protected pass pawns, which is a real problem for me. Okay, is there anything better? Okay, I don't think so. So let's just go g5. Yeah, and he plays the right move. So, what do I do? Can I get creative and maybe bring the king up? That'd be kind of funny. Do I have time for such a maneuver? Let's see. Here, here, here. Um, take, take, here. That feels slow. But maybe it's my best try. The other thing I could do is put the rook here to make this harder to achieve. Or is it truly harder to achieve? I suppose it would be, wouldn't it? Okay. Let's do that. So I got this rook protecting this guy. This rook is keeping this rook busy. And... This rook is also keeping an eye on c4 ideas. But maybe he can simply go there. Okay. So where's the king going? I think I have to worry so much about that. So let's see if my king can go on a little journey. Or if it's too much of a pipe dream. So if he goes here, okay, so we stop this idea. If I go there, he's simply going to check me, I guess. Um, I could get the F pawn rolling. And then I've got ideas of creating a pass pawn myself. So that might be the best approach. Do I have to worry about this check? Maybe king here. He checks me. I can go here. Um, but if I simply go here, go after that guy right now, then he goes here, and then maybe I can get in this way? Hmm, that's interesting. Let's give that a try. Hey, thank you for the follow. Welcome to the stream. Glad you could join us. Do check out our YouTube and our Discord channel if you're interested. You can use ex exclamation mark YouTube and exclamation mark Discord for the links. Glad you're able to join us here today. Probably rook d7 so that he can keep an eye on these two pawns. So here, here. Actually, maybe this one's better. Because I'd have f6, but then I wouldn't be able to bring my king up because then he'd take the pawn on f6. The rook does a nice job of keeping his king away. This is what I mean about a passive rook. So white is essentially is kind of playing with one rook. Because this rook on h2 is 
purely defensive, only defending that pawn, whereas this other rook is very active. Okay. Now this is interesting. Can I trade? King e3 is an issue. Because how do I, I want to get there. So the thinking must be if I go king f4, he's going to go here. Check, but maybe I can go here. And then if takes, I could take, and then I'm winning one of these two pawns, I believe. So let's uh, rock and roll with that. So despite being down a pawn, I have the two active rooks. My opponent has one active rook and one, you know, big pawn back there on h2. And like I was saying earlier, you rarely uh, want to have a passive rook. Even if you're down a pawn or two, you want to maintain the activity. You just have better chances to, you know, either win or hold a draw if you're down. Okay, so maybe the idea is king here and he's going to go g, uh, sorry, f4. So that if I take this guy, he's going to take this guy. Is that a big worry here, here? I mean, I could also just take here. But then maybe he's got rook f2 and he's gaining that. I wonder if now would be a good time to trade rooks. So takes, takes, king here, king here. I seem to be making progress there. Got to make an assessment here, and I don't have a lot of time. Um, maybe I hold off on that decision, and let's play f5. Let's improve our position first. Okay, so here, 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 I think that's okay. I think that'll be okay for us. Ah, but of course, what are we, what are we threatening here? So maybe I want to do this now. Hmm. Okay, all right, let's try this. I should be still okay here. Now, I think the idea is if I go in, he's gonna check, and if I take, he takes this guy. So what I might do is come back Try this, because his rook is still saddled to that pawn. But maybe he's got rook d1. Hmm. Yeah, it looks like he does have rook d1 there, doesn't he? So here, rook d1, rook e3. Ah, he's got this. So maybe I can play g4, takes, takes. Yeah, I think that's the best way, because I've got a pin. Okay, so now, there's a check here, here. I might be tied to my pawn. That's the only thing. Um, maybe I can go d4 here and then like rook c2 with the idea to come here. Okay, actually I like this idea. 
So I'm going to go here, and if he were to go here, I can infiltrate. Now here, I thought, if he goes to F1, can I just simply go here with the idea to push? And if he checks, I can go here, takes, takes, king here. Uh, I'm probably losing that king and pawn endgame. So here, here, that's no good. So do I have to play this? Yeah, maybe let's just hold the fort here. We have 15 second increment, so no need to make any Quick decisions. Um, yeah, I probably have to go here. And here. And here. Now we're threatening this. And if he goes rook here, then we'll take this pawn. Yeah, we have 15 second increment, so I gain 15 seconds every time I make a move. Okay, what happens here? He's going there, and then he'll be able to check me on the side. Okay. So... Can I check him here? Then he goes there. All right, let's just take the pawn. I think we can take the pawn. So yeah, his rook is just purely defensive. Okay, so now I've got this move. Now I've got this move. So now he cannot move that rook off the rank. So I think he's I think he's lost here. So let's check him so that when we do move, we'll threaten mate. Uh, sorry, we'll threaten check. Pardon me. Okay. So my thinking was here, and then we're threatening a check. Okay. I think that just loses, though. Because if he goes here, I check. And then I'm queening. No, you're not getting a take back. Opponent wants to take back. That was not a mouse slip. I am not giving you a take back. So the question is now, is he just going to sit there for 13 minutes? He's not, at least yet. So here we go. Okay. Well, a bit of a topsy-turvy game, but uh, I think that was instructive in terms of why it's good to maintain activity in the end game which I did even though I was down a pawn but my opponent did not okay so let's uh, let's look at the so this was the opening
So I thought that knight d5 was good, and it doesn't look like it was bad. Um, the engine is suggesting b4, and given how the game went, it makes sense to me now. Because it's knight, it would be nice to just leave this knight here. So it's unlikely white would allow me to trade the bishop. So bishop to f2. And uh, then I've got time. I've got time to, you know, maybe a check, even bishop to f6. But my opponent found uh, good resources. So I thought that this was good. Um, but I got in trouble, and my opponent was uh, very opportunistic because the fact that this bishop is only protected by the pawn and that this bishop is undefended, he was able to use that to his advantage, but maybe I didn't find the best way. So bishop did, so I thought here I was just winning a piece. Um, because I'm attacking this, I'm attacking this. So bishop to, whoa, yeah. So bishop to d2, and I shouldn't have taken that. I failed to see the idea in the game. I was a little too quick. So I should simply just play bishop to c5. I still have the two bishops. Now. So yeah, it looks like I'm not going to win a piece, but I'll win at least a pawn or two. So the idea is if the knight, let's say knight to e uh, e3, I simply take on f3. And uh, yeah, I'm winning a material there. If bishop here, I could also play takes, takes. Okay, so there's two pieces, but white has this check. So I'm up a pawn. Um, I've got bishop versus knight, and this knight uh, looks like it might be trapped. In fact, what happens after rook here? How does the knight get free? Why is that not just winning the knight immediately? Show me, Mr. Engine. Rook f1. And let's go, let's say bishop here. Oh, there's this tactic. Aha, very nice. The idea being that if I were to take, well, thank you very much. That's mate. Aha. So g6. And then the question is, how are you maintaining that knight? Bishop to b7. Hmm, rook take, this is more complicated than I thought. G5, rook here. Takes, takes here. Rook D8, and maybe finally we're winning the knight? No, he's got knight G8. <laughs> All right, anyway, still minus four here. I think it's clear that black is better. Um, Andrew wants to go bishop f3 simply to win that. I, I, maybe I could even just go bishop here. Yeah, this knight, you really don't want your knight there. Okay, let's uh, 